So today uh, I'm going to uh, present lecture on launching of the mechanics of practice. Uh, I learned stability from um, three giants, uh, Ramnuti, Kalandaman, and Meher. Okay, so if you give me any equation, both of the equations I will solve. LTV, no problem, whatever condition we solve. So probably we thought many of the academicians or the students are in a, in a silo, right? They are in an academic silo. But the practice is completely different. Although we are using uh, the knowledge that we have gained um, or in the practice, both are, I mean, seem to be entirely different or the assumptions that we really make on the analysis and design do not get really reflected in the practice for many reasons. So my lecture is going to be first a uh, little bit on the mechanics and how I mean, not big equations that I'll give you the some fundamentals. And then I'll share two stories. Because one 10 years back, another one uh, two years back. Uh, so uh, it's a drama. There are many actors here who were in the drama. So, uh, Joe, you are there. Saravan, you are there. So, I will play the drama. Okay. So, fine, sir. I'll start with the, um, right, the, the first one. Right. Um, so, stability, of course, when we traveled across all the academia, we found that, I mean, the concept of stability was, I mean, not. Uh, taught enough in the academia because there's um, not many faculties who are trained or um, there are many um, in colleges there's no curriculum on uh, stability so, so a postgraduate engineer uh, likely to uh, finish uh, without even you know formally trained stability. stability I would like to show it's a it's a it's a, it's a phenomena right very similar to Lee Chatley's principle right in chemistry you have seen any system under the equilibrium is disturbed by an external force. It will shift to a new equilibrium in order to undo the change and also by least effort. That's the last point I want to quote. But if you actually compress a column, initially it is by axial shortening, right? It has to do lots of, you know, say, uh, this can be taken as a potential and lowering the potential is the intent of the system. Now, after this, it has to actually compress, but then beyond the point called the oil critical load, it finds uh, bending away reduces the potential of the system. So it switches from one, we call it as a primary path into the secondary path. It happens all. Now, one of the DNA of stability is that the displacement happens perpendicular to the application of the load. Okay, so the different types of there. This is symmetric stable. You mean that uh, if you have a player load on a column, whether it's up to the left hand side, the right hand side, the critical load is the same. Similarly, um, on the uh, you know unstable, yeah, I mean symmetric unstable, that means you you can push the structure into any direction into the pair. Of course, there is some called asymmetry. If the structure is slightly further in one direction, it will stiffen, take the load. And in the other direction, it will come. So this is generally uh, something about um, stability. Okay, right. Now this is what the uh, topic of today. Okay. So right, this is what we have seen. This is a, a simply supported thing, and this is the candidate. So what we can say is, I uh, apply the load spray. I would expect you it, it to bend. But after some amount of load or some amount of bending moment, it goes sideways. That means this displacement is, I mean, perpendicular to the plane in which I want. The okay, same thing for a simply supporting. Okay, this we call it as lateral postural moment. Why is a stability problem? It's basically because the deformations happen perpendicular to the application of load, and this system relieves the load. Right, not by affecting his full metal properties, but mostly in the elastic. <laughs> so some of us, some of us, okay, okay some of us um, always uh, agree that stability is always an elastic norm. Now there are the terms called inelastic stability. 
But then the conservative people, um, you know, the, 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 the people in that school of thought, they say uh, stability is always elastic, um, and this is the fundamental of the economy. Right. Now, what happens is that a small, uh, um, set. for example, the beam bends for some time after reaching a critical moment called MCR, it twists or it goes down and twists. I will play the game. You are supposed to bend the beam, right? So it goes down and then at a particular moment, this is a cross section about simply supported. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm looking at a cross section. One thing that you can clearly say is for this cross section, the, the ratio of the major to minor montage is very high. So these kind of beams are prone to lateral cross Right. Now, if you take IS 800, you will find the design of columns and the V, I mean, basically LTV, was almost the same. I would say analogous, right? Okay, we have um, lambda, here we've got lambda, here lambda LT. We have V, here V, K, L, T. We have chi, which is the standard interaction factor, it is chi LT. So, it is analogous. Why? Because, right? The beam buckling can be seen as the buckling of the compression portion of the beam, right? So when you apply a moment, the top will be under compression, the bottom will be tension. So what I can do is, I can have a fictitious beam in which the stresses are, right, I made it equal and treat this as a column. Right, now this column is going to buckle out of plane, this is what I have shown. So purely this is a lateral buckling of the compression portion of the model. But then because of compatibility, these two cannot be different. So in order to bring in the uh, compatibility, the section twists. So we say lateral torsion. So hence this is called lateral torsional buckling. And primarily the concept is the same for column buckling and the beam buckling is always a stability problem of a um, uh, prismatic member and, and then same procedure around that. Okay, let us go a little further. Right, when we say lateral, no, no big issue, we have already studied the problem. Torsional is where that, you know, many things come up and in the case of um, uh, torsion, there are two types. One is called the pure torsion or same manans torsion, which we have already, you know, studied in plane shape. Now, we have another called blast of torsion or warping torsion, which produces a torsional strength by, you know, longitudinal uh, bending. Or you can see here, this flange is being bent, right? And amazingly, um, this um, um, the warping torsion is very, I mean, very useful in the case of a thin section, right? Look at here. This is the concept of, uh, you know, bimoment and warping. So I have, um, this is a warped surface. So I have just, um, you know, um, built in a, a steel beam and the yellow one is a warping that takes place in the flanges. Now look at the web, right? It is at the line of contour flexure, okay, the entire length. So the spotlight is purely on the flanges, okay? So what the flanges do, the flanges bend, right? Because of this bending, implant bending, it produces a shear. It's always bending is you know complete or a complement for the cutter. So these moments will resist the torsion. So that was really wonderful. Right. This is very prevalent in thin wall section. Right? If you have thin wall section because um you are you because of this your thickness is very small, right? You're going to sum up all the moment over here, the sum up all the moment throughout the cross section. We take the property of BTQ by one third BTQ, and here, of course, it is the shear that develops on the flanges through the bending, which resists the torsion. Okay, good. Right now, after that, which are the sections generally um, prone to uh, lateral torsion? Okay, or sections with low torsion ridges. Correct. So there are two terms that we have learned: lateral and torsion. So if you have, I, I think with lateral uh, strength, no LTV can happen. If you have a more torsional strength, then also uh, LTV can happen. So normally it is agreed that thin wall open sections are prone to LTV and closed sections 
are very less prone to health. Right. Now, if you see, if you use the, you know, find the torsion rigidity, you will find open sex, closed sections will have very high, sometimes even 100 times. Uh, so, usually when you want to avoid, right, people say use a box section to avoid health. Right. Now, come to the um, ratio of the major to uh, minor non -pathenation. When it is high, then it is more prone to LTV. When it is, you know, almost nearly equal, I mean, less prone, but still is there. But then, if I'm going to bend it by the minor axis, right, so if I'm going to load it, uh, I'm allowed to bend the minor axis, no LTV. Why? Because my lateral strength is very high, right? In the earlier case, we said the torsional strength is very high, right? So, here the lateral strength zone, a beam bending by its minor axis, I mean, respectively, uh, do not undergo lateral torsional bending. Another one point is that, right, it's a long beam. I would say I haven't qualified it, but then say a long beam. How long is that? Like, there is a factor called lambda LP less than 0.4. Let's not get into that. But we say long beam and a short beam, which is less prone. Okay. Now, if I want to convert the long beam into a series of short beams, I have to provide a brace at the compression portion. And that must be adequately transferred. Like you cannot put just a you know member on the top, like you know monkey on the tree. So, so this be effectively transferred. So we have seen three uh, basic uh, you know this one is the lateral capacity, the torsion capacity, and the length of it. Right now, what is that? Many students don't um, understand is that there are three boundary conditions for it. We are very, very, uh, we are very uh, sure of the fracture boundary condition. We have, you know, simply supported, we have uh, cantilever, raw, fixed, we are very thorough. But then, there are two other boundary conditions comes in when you are dealing with LTV. So, one is called the fork or the torsional condition, right? Whether the torsion can take place on the support, right? We call it as a fork condition. And the last one is the warping boundary condition. Because warping is also a longitudinal deformation phenomenon. Right? The warping. So, if you are putting a hand and you are compressing it, you are not allowing the warping to happen. So, these three in combination decides the effective length for it. Because many of the students I find they are very familiar with this, but all these three are very important for the Z which I will show you in my talk. Okay. Right. Now I can have what is this boundary condition? It is a fork, torsionally fixed, but this is a hinge, but this is a roller. So flexurally I can have a hinge and roller. Right. So it is only a schematic diagram. So we can always have a combination of flexural, torsional and warping boundary conditions. Right. If I go to real world connections, let me take this. So flexurally fixed because I have two elements away from the flange, right? These are the elements which will give me a lot of moment capacity. The shear is transferred by this. Correct. So, as well as flexure is fixed. What about torsional? Absolutely arrested. Why? It cannot rotate because this will not allow me, the, the, these members connected will not allow. What about warping? Arrested. Why? Because they are just, you know, but, I mean, they are, they are completely framed against the member. Now, Coming here, flexurally fixed, torsionally arrested because they would not work. But if there is no flange one, I'm only hypothetically I'm saying there is something called an air gap. Correct? So it will be warping free condition. Right? So in some of the connections, we do get warping free condition. Right? In which, of course, uh, Sebu is, uh, has done his PhD on this. So this is what I'm So always, we can always relay our ideal boundary condition to. Now, the problem with stability or uh, this thing is that where I apply the load really matters. Because why? If I apply the load at the top, then when the LTB takes place, this load becomes a destabilizing, right? So it further rotates it. But whereas you are applying load at the bottom, when the beam um, rotates this way and the load is going to restore it back. So the point of application is very important. Another one is there are different combination of flexural and uh, torsional conditions. Right. For example, let's say 
We are looking, these things we are looking from the plan. This is in elevation. Correct. So this is the bending moment diagram. Right. For example, it is, right, is a, is a simply supported flexuary. This is my bending moment diagram. This is um, uh, again simply supported and this is fixed. So I have the bending moment diagram. Now look at the deformation in the torsion. This is torsionally free to rotate. So here it is torsionally fixed in, it behaves like a, a fixed beam. This is torsionally free. So we have a very interesting condition. It can be flexurally fixed, but then torsionally free. So these are the conditions that, you know, really um, matter. And in the course of practice, I don't know how many of you have seen this. Uh, many students is find it very easy to flip the pages through. Uh, there's no point because you can see here, the code is given only for simply supported B. Look at here, torsional restraint, walking restraint, and the condition of loading. Whether it is normal or destabilizing. Normal is bottom or the center destabilizing is the top. Great. Now, you have different torsional restraint with respect to the force support and different walking restraint. Depending upon that, I have my um, effective length for my buckling because buckling is very similar in a prismatic one. So this gives us the three boundary conditions all like that, right? Now, what is the expression? It is um, you know, derived by Timoshenko for an ideal bisymmetric section. This is what is given in our IS 800. You see here the M critical or M naught is actually a two multiplicative component. That means the lateral buckling reacts over the torsional buckling, right? So they are multiplicating. That means one right influence the other. But inside the torsional dome, this is pure torsion, this is warping torsion. So what happens now is this pi square here by L e square is nothing but our buckling about minor axis, which is interacting over the pure torsion and warping torsion. Correct? Physically, it is very easy to. Now, when we go there and see for hot rod sections, it is very difficult to bend the flanges. So what we see is the warping. It's very difficult in hot rod section. So I can simply neglect that in my expression and I say interaction of my pure torsion and buckling about minor is absolutely sufficient. Similarly, if I want thin wall open sections or cold box knee sections, I can do that should completely neglect GJ because most of the torsional stiffness comes from that. In fact, these are the customized equations uh, we can always do. Right. You can see here. The expression given in the code in um, uh, 8.2.2.1 is this one, base case, wherein the symmetric beam sub is subjected to a uniform moment. Any moment gradient, any other moment gradient, and where there is a negative moment, you will find these are the multiplication factors for the MCR. For example, you can, your code can say uh, X, and sometimes you, because of the moment gradient, you might get the torsional critical value two times, right? So the, the this is completely neglected in our code. So most of the designers use 8.2.1, but the, that's an expression in the annexure which you can use to find out there are three parameter equations. We can say the moment gradient and point of application and the monosymmetric balance, right? So this is very important. Right? Now coming to the story that I want to tell you. This happened ten years back. Okay, this is Savinul ROV. I'm talking about a, not a very great, it's a stick construction. We are we have an ROV with uh, steel concrete composite. Um, so there is an article about that. This one was like for two years without being built, so we were the fortune. Look at here, sir. This is a skew, right? About uh, 50 meters, uh, 55 skew, and this is the you know place where the girder is still the So. Initially, this is the girder. You can see the channel shear connectors. And um, we have the best calculation because we are giving consulting from IIT Madras. So we, we saw the Abacus, right, the best software, and said, uh, when you put it, you will get MCR as a 2. Say, bond gradient 2.5. And people ask me, sir, is it fine? Absolutely fine. When we put them there, right, it buckled. Right? I mean, because the, every combination is fine, but then the entire grid is not buckling. So we couldn't release the uh, uh, hook at all. There are two cranes lifting in tandem, right? And also there's a problem that railways won't uh, give, uh, you know, enough line blocks. So 
hardly eight hours right along and you find. And if you get into this kind of problem, then your time is gone. So first time I was startled. I said my calculation is right. So, if you want, I'll show you. So but then uh, later I learned the uh, two things that right? so somehow this is the best way to lift a bridge, sir. Because you're lifting by the minor, there is no LTV. Of course, they won't pay you for lifting like this. Right. Now initially then what happened? Uh, it was lifted with a, a torsional support being get, uh, ready. And it was also very difficult. So in the daytime we cannot do the correction. So it's a secret uh, between the four walls, please don't tell outside. Uh, any problem is not shown in the daytime, only night we see. <laughs> so you can see the LTV of the girl, he is a contractor from but John. Of course, the, the good thing is LTV is elastic, right? It's elastic. So we can do it right, with some marks and so next time onward, there's two girdles with there. Now of course there's Q. So you've got a brace which is inclined. Right? When you lift it, two uh, girdles will try to shear across each other. Right? So this is basically an out of plane, partly out of plane. Correct? So it was very difficult to and of course what is the capacity of range when you are lifting two? Because your capacity again, tandem lifting, and it was, I mean, a big learning for us. Um, yeah, see, this is the one which the twin girder. The first one is was done by some juga, right? I, I got the word from Vijay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so the first one was locked, and after the uh, after this, somehow we did the, the second one. You look at this torsional support. I was telling about torsional boundary condition. So we say we need torsional boundary condition. The contractor needs a vertical post connected, and he said, Yes, I have given a torsional boundary condition. Anyway, um, after this, it was you can look at the torsional uh, right? So he's a proud engineer having done that. Right. Of course, so look at here. Look at here, the, the you can see the 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 other side, the torsional support in the piece, yes. You can see these are the very very steep, very steep. Probably will they, uh, I mean, will they hold it or not? Anyway, but then the bridge was completed. Of course, five girders, G one to G five, and of course, successfully opened. Then I did the uh, uh, load uh, uh, proof load test, and then uh, it was open for traffic. And we were happy that many of the people from that way, because it was not working for two and a half years. And IIT Madras, we put our banner, and then they were good. So the other story is um, uh, very recent. This is an all steel flyover in Markandam and Parthipuram, for which our team got the um, uh, NHA award. Um, of course, not, not my team members are there, I will give uh, it if possible. So this was done at Pondicherry. Um, everything was mock up, was pack up, right? Everything was mock up. And and we had a nice um, uh, planning. Okay, can you play the video? I'll finish it in a few more minutes. So, yeah. uh, the actor is here. The first one is sitting there. Uh, see the planning that went on. Bent. 
right? It, it went uh, LTV and you can see the, uh, this is again the hooks were on because we could not release it. Again, we do uh, work in the night, right? And I mean, we were, we were not requiring that personal visibility, right? So an idea came from a brilliant person, contact in this chuckling now. Because is he an engineer from yeah. huh? So he came out with this, oh my god, you want a partial visibility? Do you have a cross girder? Yes, put the cross girder and we introduce this. And for the smaller depth, we get a beautiful restoring moment. Correct? A beautiful restoring moment. Because now these two will give me the restoring moment against torsion. So once we have that, everything was done. So we waited one day and then after that it was uh, set. So the, immediately once it is there, immediately the other girdle was lifted and the cross was done. Right. So this is uh, the next day is a holiday. When everything is done, <laughs> we can pick a holiday. Uh, so to so really enjoy it is a 47 meter. The problem is we have all steam here is a concrete. There is a tunnel that is going under. So railway said nothing. Right? Railways have got some tones. So no, sorry to say that. Okay. So this is very nice to follow the work. And I want to play the last video, please. And because um, last time also I showed people from the behind. So I don't want to tell their facial reaction. Right? You can see here this is um, Saramlan <laughs> sitting here. And this is just after the hockey. When we placed it, everybody clapped. The whole press and people went off. And we were only there. Because we could not sleep. So you can see the expression. This is the SP Laya, the uh, owner. And this is Sarvanan, press caller, I believe. And uh, you can see our man, Joe, there, right? So, Joe, this was the night before uh, the solution came. And uh, Mr. Sakalingan came overnight. And we gave the idea, a beautiful idea of giving the restoring moment on the, on the other side. So, I'll stop here and I'll say that the cost of okay, continue to fascinate, personally, and me. Because as a theory and practice, um, appears to complement each other. The reason is, when we do the analysis, we assume all that are present there. Right? When you launch it, by the time you provide all the conditions, the, the service part of it started. So that's the difference I felt like theory is fine, but then when you move it into practice, uh, these are the things I learned. These are just a few nuances that I have learned and it gives me a lot of pleasure to learning and this LTP uh, continue to fascinate. Thank you very much.